Hello, and welcome to Let's Review. I've got to be honest, I wasn't really expecting much from this game. I happened to spot it on Steam, it was free, and it sounded vaguely interesting. Since finishing it, I decided to check out its development process. Sunrider was kickstarted. The developers originally asked for $3,000. What they got was 44039 And have they used the money well? Well... I think the only way to answer that is to start, as always, with the gameplay. As the captain of the Sunrider, you command both the Sunrider itself and the squadron assigned to it. Unfortunately, for story reasons that I'll get into later, you start the game without your squadron and you have to build it up as the game progresses, adding pilots and their ships called Riders to your ranks. The Riders are mechs. Each one is completely unique and in their own way, they are all awesome. The battle mode for Sunrider features the Sunrider and whatever allied mechs you have with you taking on groups of enemies. You are almost always outnumbered badly, but the Sunrider is significantly stronger than anything they can throw at you, as are your mechs relative to them. What can I do for you, Mom, Capitan? That's the only audio, by the way. The the or the only pedal. voice acting, rather. So. If we look at Chigara's mech here, which, if memory serves, is... Nope, can't remember what that one's called, unfortunately. It has a blue markers around it. Those indicate her defensive shields, which can be used to protect against lasers. They automatically cover anyone within the radius, and you can upgrade them. Which is very useful. So if I move her to there... Then the Saga's rider, the Blackjack is now covered, and any incoming laser damage will be reduced. From this position, Saga can use one of her weapons, so melee strikes, pulse fire, long range laser fire, assault guns, and missiles. Each one serves a different purpose and is good against a different type of enemy. The red markers that spring up around these guys, what I highlight the missiles, indicates they have flak defenses, which will shoot down incoming missiles and potentially stop the entire swarm because you fire missiles and swarms. From here, pulse lasers have a very low chance to hit. Long range lasers have a much better chance. If these guys were shielded, we'd also be seeing the blue shield icons cropping up around them to indicate the defense. So I've got a fairly low chance to hit, but I'm still going to take it. So here we get a nice little cinematic of the blackjack firing its lasers and it's missed. Ugh, so frustrating. And she comments. I've done this. We can also move the Sunrider forward. Now the Sunrider being larger takes more energy to move through each square. You have a hundred energy, though again this can be upgraded later. We will engage the enemy face to face. Now we've done everything we can for this turn. Actually, oh. no, we haven't. We can still can have Chigara do something. So I think I'm going to have her buff the Sunrider's accuracy. Now we end our turn, an in our and we let the enemy attack us. Now the enemy is very missile happy to begin with, bombarding you a lot at long range. Minor damage sustained. All systems are still green. So Chigara is taking a little bit of fire, but that's okay. It's probably because she's in the center of the formation, but because we've got decent flak defenses from both. That was a close call, wasn't there it? There we go. Because we've got flak defenses from both the Sunrider and the Blackjack, she takes severely reduced damage. Misses. Fire and lasers. Okay. So we've taken a little bit of damage, but you'll notice that the shields negated 42 of that damage. That was significantly reduced. It's a system that's all about what counters what. So, do you attempt to counter against longer range missile attacks with lots of flak defenses? Do you prefer to counter against lasers with greater shields to try and find a balance? There are also kinetic weapons, which I'll demonstrate momentarily once the enemy turn has ended. As I say, the enemy turns tend to take a while because there's almost always loads of them. That should be about it. Yes. So that is now our turn. So, I highlight the Sunrider. There are also rockets, which you have to purchase. The rockets cost, I think it's $300 a pop. Uh, they are single-use, but they are very, very powerful. Missiles 
regenerate between each battle. However, you only have a limited number of uses per battle. Again, that can be upgraded. The kinetic rifle, or the kinetic guns rather, are extremely powerful, but they're relatively inaccurate. So they're pretty good against capital ships, especially when you're getting in close. Pulse lasers fire a lot more rapidly than regular lasers, but are less accurate. High-powered lasers, very accurate, very powerful. And the assault guns, which uh, are also used for shooting down incoming rockets, but they are very effective against lightly armored targets at medium to close range. So from here, I'm going to advance forward, and then fire a kinetic barrage at this guy. Again, low impact chance. But if it hits, it's powerful enough to be completely fatal. And that's the destruction of the enemy. And that's how the combat goes. It's a classic turn-based puzzle. So Chigara is primarily a support unit, so I can use her to, say, repair the Sunrider there. She does have a laser weapon, but it's not particularly powerful compared to some of the others. And that's basically it for the combat. The other thing you can do is issue command level orders. So you can provide boosts, uh, heal the Sunrider, and fire the Vanguard cannon, which is extremely powerful, has its own nice little cinematic for when it fires. Uh, you get the command points when you finish the mission, and it's based on how well you've done in that mission. So at the moment, this is a relatively early mission, so I don't have enough to fire the Vanguard cannon, but if I wanted, I could declare full forward and give my allies a boost. And from here, if I just demonstrate her missiles, she can fire. And because he was near the front of his formation and his flak defences were limited, most of the missiles gone through, and that was fatal. And that's basically it for some riders' combat. In addition to the combat system, there's also an upgrade system which can be used to improve both the Sunrider and each of our individual riders. This is Sunrider's research screen. From here, you can improve a variety of aspects of both the Sunrider and the various mechs you have available. So, for example, if I look at the Liberty, I can look at her shields. Now, her shields are very useful in defending other ships. So, for example, if I wanted to improve that, I could spend a thousand to double her shield range from one square to two squares. This is very useful for when you've got a slightly larger fleet that you need to keep covered. Alternatively, I could look at the Sunrider's kinetic weapons. So, if I wanted to improve their damage, I could improve the damage of both the main kinetic guns and the assault guns by upgrading here. I could also reduce their energy cost, so I would be able to fire them more often during the mission. That's particularly useful when you've got lots and lots of targets to take out. So you can fire off more volleys, do more damage. Same can be done for the lasers, or I could improve the missiles, or I could improve the quality of her defenses, her flak defenses and her armor. I can also do basic things like increase her health, increase the amount of energy she has available for per turn, or increase her chances of avoiding the enemy attack. Same goes here. I could also improve her lasers. Unfortunately, you can't upgrade the quality of the Liberty's special abilities, so things like uh, her repair drones or um, her anti flak defenses. That, I think, would actually be an interesting thing because that would make the Liberty more and more useful later game. It's a minor thing, possible suggestion, that I would quite like to see in a later game. The Blackjack is a straight up tank slash combat mech. Again, lots of defenses, a variety of weapons that can be upgraded. It's mostly linear, you know, there's no sort of unlocking extra abilities or anything like that. It's, it's all damage buffs and things like that, but it's absolutely fine. It lets you spec your ships how you want to. For example, on my first run through, I put a lot of effort into making my lasers more effective, so I made it, I reduced the energy cost of my laser blasts so that I could fire up to three pulse laser blasts in a single turn, which is very useful against medium sized enemies, so mechs and small cruisers. On my second run through, I focused on my kinetic upgrades, which meant my main guns became available to fire two and towards the end of the game even three times in a single turn. 
this made the Sunrider extremely effective against larger enemies. It's all about how you want to spec it, and it does give you a decent bit of variety in how you want to do it. As with most good visual novels, you'll also make choices as you play that will affect both the story and the combat missions, changing up which riders are available, or even altering the mission objectives. Overall, I really like the gameplay. It's still in need of a few balance tweaks, and there are times when it can be a little bit aggravating, but for the most part it's solid, it's enjoyable, and it works. The only real problem I have with it is that this game has an annoying habit of spawning in lots of enemies towards the end of a mission just when you think you're almost done. It almost always makes sense from a story point of view, but it can be a little annoying at times. Overall though, I like the gameplay. The story follows Captain Kato Shields, newly assigned commanding officer of the Sunrider, a newly commissioned cruiser carrier hybrid. Unfortunately, before your crew has fully come on board and before your squadron of riders have been embarked, your homeworld of Sarah comes under attack and you are forced to retreat from the invading packed forces. You are then forced to find allies and find a way to retake your homeworld. And I know what you're thinking. That it is one of the most overused plots in all of science fiction? That it is. Now who the hell are you? I am an expert in all things cliched and overused. I have been sent to assist you. Sent by whom? Our mutual acquaintances. The ones who introduced you to Annie. Oh, them. Well, I guess you can stay then. You do realise that the uh, mysterious man talking only in vague phrases to confuse the audience is a massive cliché in of itself, right? Naturally. If I were not clichéd myself, I would be ill-suited to assist you in this task. Fair enough then. <clears throat> Now, where was I? The retreat from a superior force. Ah, thank you. Yes. Following the defeat of their homeworld, the crew of the Sunrider realize that if they wish to have any hope of defeating Pact, they will need allies, and they will need a full complement of riders. Personally, I like the story. I've said before that I don't mind a cliched setup, provided they do something interesting with it, and for the most part, they do. The story never really takes any major unexpected turns, barring one admittedly very good twist, but it's enjoyable and well written enough that I really don't mind. But what really makes this one shine for me is the characters. The vast majority of characters in Sunrider are women who wear skin tight flight suits most of the time. Did you not recently criticise Sakura Spirit for a similar design decision? I did, however. Sunrider gets away with it for two important reasons. Firstly, I am perfectly willing to accept that mech pilots have to wear skin-tight flight suits. It's just programmed into my science fiction fan DNA. The other reason I don't mind it is that Sunrider isn't badly written. This is a late game image of the crew of the Sunrider. From the left, we have Asaga, Chigara, Inari, Ava, Kriska, Claude, and Sola. Every one of these women is a very well-rounded character. They all have their own personality traits, quirks, and in several cases, perversions. Claude in particular deserves a shout out for trying to feel up her commanding officer. Yeah, here's the thing, I could criticize that kind of thing as over-sexualization, but frankly, I don't mind it because A, she's the only one, and frankly, there are some women out there who are like that, and B, she's never presented as someone who can't take care of herself if it comes down to it. And that's the main reason that I like the characters in this game. None of them are ever depicted as helpless. In addition, Sunrider has one of the best villains I've encountered in some time, largely because he's a full-on, evil lap spewing moustache-twirling villain who is an absolute ball to voice. Frankly, I look forward to killing the hell out of him when parts 2 and 3 roll around. I've never been a massive fan of the anime art style, it's all big eyes and bigger hair. But there is one thing that anime does better than any other kind of art style. Giant frickin' robots. I love the designs of the mechs in this game. They are all wonderfully designed, they all have a similar design philosophy, but they're all individual and unique enough that you can tell them apart at a glance. What's more, Unlike most games where they would simply just pull out the specific weapon you want used for that time, you can always see every weapon whether they're using it at that moment or not. 
it's a very wise design choice and really makes them feel like they are bristling with weapons. They are gorgeously designed, they look absolutely fabulous, and I, I just love these designs to bits. From a technical side, Sunrider does have a couple of issues. Uh, it suffers a little bit from slowdown during some of the larger battles, especially if you're using the skip mode to get past combat animations. It's a minor problem, and for the most part you won't notice it if you're actually watching all the combat animations, but it is something to be aware of. I like the music for this game. Hell, I even quite like the J-pop song that quite often plays over your turn. As for the voice acting, it's limited to short little speeches during the battles, which might start to grate after a while, but for the most part they're short and cute enough that I quite enjoyed them. I'm also fairly certain that at least one of them mentions the pilot's porn collection. I'm still not entirely sure I heard that one right, and since I can't remember which video it was in, I can't actually go back and check. Oh well, never mind, I'll just have to assume that I did hear it. Ultimately, we come to the two important questions. Did I like this game? Hell yes, I did. Should you buy it? Well, as with last week's game, it's free, so you have no real reason not to. Sunrider First Arrival is an excellent visual novel with a lot of style and a lot of charm. It's still in need of a few balance tweaks, but that's minor stuff, and it's very playable and very enjoyable in its current state. I absolutely recommend you check it out. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go have a chat with our mysterious new friend. I'll see you later. So is this going to be a regular thing, you turning up like this? Only when the game in question makes excessive use of cliché. So pretty much every week then? Most likely. And did our mutual friends have any other message for me? Indeed they did. Keep your eyes open and your blade ready. And when it comes, trust in her. Well, that's helpful and not at all vague.